Hello and I welcome you to today's special webinar, how to trade the market opening of the US markets. Um, I'm sorry, I'm uh, a little late, so uh, two minutes late, that has something to do with a very uh, simple reason. Um, I just held a webinar for uh, the German audience and uh, I just finished it several several minutes ago and I had to start this one and, and so on. But um, yeah. Uh, Nevertheless, the thing is that, um, and this is a little unfortunate right now, I think those webinars, how to trade the U.S. market opening and, and how to trade it in a, in a really professional way and also um, how to trade it in, um, in an active way, uh, those webinars are usually a very great opportunities to really show um, what trading is about, but therefore, and this is the problem <laughs> right now, but therefore you need volatility and there is no real volatility. Uh, it's not just in the US markets, but this is by the way something I'll, I'll just present to you so, uh, several, um, 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 in several uh, minutes here. Uh, let's, let's right now switch over to the Dow Jones and the market opening here. So we're not just talking about low volatility in the US equity markets. Uh, but we are also talking about low volatility in all equity markets. So it's uh, it's 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 not just the Dow Jones, but it's also the DAX, which is um, yeah, not well. I don't want to say behaving in a certain way, since um, this somehow implies that that I that I can uh, can 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 uh, or that the DAX behaves in a certain way. So it's it's uh, no, that's just the wrong saying. Uh, I need to say this in a different way. Uh, so the market, yeah, okay, let's let's use behavior. Um, so the market is not behaving in a way which is great. Let's say let's call it that way. So it's very erratic right now, very choppy. Let's come back to to uh, to the DAX long or short in the morning. Uh, let's let's come back here to the to the DAX for example. You you may uh, remember the setup I just presented to the audience. I, I said, well, why not thinking about going short here? Um, with a break below 12, uh, yeah, 12,620 points and um, put the stop above the daily highs. In this case, by the way, we, we broke out here on the, out of the open range on the upside um, um, shortly before putting a stop here. Risk Initial risk was 45 points and then going for a drop significantly below 12,600 points. Main reason was um, if you look at the uh, um, hourly chart, the chart or the, the time frame which is um, dominating the five minute time frame, you could say, well, yesterday we saw a squeeze here on the upside pushing us to 12,700 shortly above this level. And um, so I already talked about this potential attack here several days, I wouldn't say weeks, but days ago, uh, when I said, well, if there's another attack and the DAX bulls fail to push above 12,700 points, well, there's a good chance then to say probably we go aggressively short from here and, uh, well, anticipate, try to anticipate a break here on the downside of 12,400 points. The thing is that um, that was the, the, the main idea behind um, the trading idea in the morning, the setup in the morning. Unfortunately, there is no real, yeah, no real volatility, no real uh, anxiousness, no real nervousness, which is... Uh, yeah, pushing markets lower here, which now means that the market is uh, trading all in all in a very, very choppy environment. And um, the thing is, I, I already prepared the technical piece um, for the German audience here for the DAX tomorrow. Um, the thing is, we have kind of a prolongated weekend ahead of us with, um, um, I, I don't even know the, uh, the English expression for this. So in Germany, we call it Pfingsten. Um, just one second, I, I just look it up here. Um, so it's a bank holiday on Monday, even though the DAX is open, um, and you can trade the DAX, but don't expect too much. One second. So it's Pentecost. <laughs> Do you guys know what's Pentecost? <laughs> okay, uh, one second. Um, Whitson. Okay, I think it's it's really yeah it's it's here it's 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 a Christian yeah and it's uh, Pentecost, okay. However, so it's a bank holiday, and uh, nevertheless you can trade the DAX, um, but the volatility will be really low. And um, all in all, it should be expected that tomorrow market participants already prepare for this prolongated weekend, meaning that um, um, liquidity could dry um, out here um, even more. 
making it then likely that if the market pushes, attacks this region around 12,700 points, that in such a case, um, the market really pushes higher then, since there is no real willingness of selling um, then if we push above 12,700 points. So there could be a chance for bigger moves tomorrow, um, even though we have to wait for, um, or we have to, yeah, definitely wait for next week then to see whether this is a sustainable move. But all in all, this could be something which is getting interesting tomorrow. But today, don't expect too much. Same. Th well, that was the first thing in the morning. Don't expect too much here uh, for the DAX. But also now in terms of the Dow Jones, don't expect too much. And if you expect anything, well, you probably should expect it on the upside. Um, meaning in this case that if we prepare ourselves, if, if we plan to trade the Dow Jones here, I'd go for a break out of the open range on the upside, meaning going long um, here with a break above 21,036 points, putting a stop below the daily lows, which is lying, uh, or which are currently at 20,989, so the initial risk is 47 points, and then we go from here, um, we go for a test of these um, um, highs here, around 21,100 points, probably a push above this level, this is something you can then see uh, in the daily chart here a little better. What's the target above this? It's the region around the all-time high, around 21,170 points. And um, yeah, so that's uh, that's in, in fact the region you would you, you should look for. Um, it's not just uh, it's not just here that the overall. By the way, one second. No, I have to slow down a little so first of all first of all here this is the first thing so from a pure technical perspective it's not just that here under uh, these conditions there is the advantage which should be found and, 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 and you should look for the advantage here on the long side but also in terms of volatility that's exactly what I was talking about I'm referring to the all time without showing you this uh, following chart um, so I just want to search for the VIX in this case is the volatility index on the S&P in this case we are looking at the Dow Jones they are highly positively uh, um, uh, correlated and um, you can see it here so it's around 10 if you can if you look at it from one year perspective you see it, these are the one year lows um, if you look at it from a five year perspective it's the five year lows we're trading at right now in terms of volatility so rather sooner than later there will be a pick up in volatility I bet for it and I definitely um, um, awaited probably in late summer, somewhere in July, somewhere in August, um, but not right now, to be honest. And that's one of the reasons why uh, those events are, on the one hand, are great events. Um, on the other hand, on the current market conditions are just not so great at all, since it, it's possible to, to formulate a trading setup. But to be honest, I don't really want to go for them, since uh, I don't, don't I just don't expect too much here. And it just does not fit my trading style. That's the other thing which is important for a trader. So you might wonder, well, if you have a setup, right, then, then you should definitely go for it. Um, I have a setup and I have a strategy I'm going with. But what I need is, first of all, volatility. And I need breakouts, which just, um, yeah, put um, uh, the markets in a, uh, in a mode where we then have a, um, a, te um, a tendency to get to see a structure, intraday trend structure, which is uh, generating great payoff ratios, which I need for my trading to have, um, uh, to be profitable. Meaning, all in all, um, if you sum this up, I'm anticipating breaks out of or above below um, certain regions and I hope that with these breaks you then get to see such an intraday trend structure and this is what I try to capitalize in my trading so this is something you just don't get to see here in the DAX so therefore you just you definitely need a trend you need a break above a certain level um, or a significant level and then, then if it occurs then you just go for it and this is the, the problem right now this is something we just don't get to see here so um, but before I, I present the strategy to you, so at least you can you can take the strategy for you and, and probably adapt it, have an idea, okay, this is something I could look for also in other markets or if volatility um, picks up again, then you, you adapt it, you, you probably train it, you simulate the trades here 
um, and then you go for for the strategy. Let's say in the moment that uh, volatility picks up again, and then uh, the market environment fits this strategy, or the strategy fits the market environment um, a little better. Um, so before we do this, I definitely want to show you uh, the markets I'm currently looking at. So if I'm not looking at equity markets here, um, what I do is I, I mainly look for setups in the currency markets. And there are two currencies um, I have on the agenda right now, especially one, by the way, which is the Canadian dollar. It's the CAT. So um, EuroCAD seen, has seen a, a very strong move here on the upside. It was based on, um, on, on two two reasons. The main reason was that uh, capital flew back into the Eurozone after the victory of uh, Emmanuel Macron here in the, um, or during, or after the French um, um, election around the uh, French president, or the presidential election, so that's the right way to, to put it. And um, that was one of the reasons why we've seen this Macron gap, and uh, yeah, you were pushing higher, but on the other hand, you it's not just it's it's not just the euro which is really strong here. I mean, you can also look it up here in the euro USD, for example. Obviously, it's 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 uh, it's euro strange. Nevertheless, there was also another reason pushing euro cat higher, and this had something to do. Still has probably something to do with the fact that the markets are right now heavily short the Canadian dollar. They shorted the Canadian dollar aggressively, and they are still aggressively short the Canadian dollar. So and um, one second, I'll see whether where I have it. So it's here. So there's a there's a great way um, here to 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 have a look at how the big speculators are positioned in the commitment of traders report. It's called uh, timingcharts.com, and um, here you see it's the Euro FX future. If you look for CA, you can find the Canadian dollar future, and here in the Canadian dollar future, you can then see a small button it's called COT it's the commitment of traders report and now what I do is I'll just show you the last I show you all I show you all the data back I don't know into the 90s at least with the commitment of traders report here so yes it's back into the 90s 1995 we started and um, now you have to understand what's the the green what's the blue and what's the red line so the red line is the uh, most uninteresting, it's the non-reportables. You can find the commitment of traders report. The blue line, this is, uh, these are the commercials, and the, the um, green line, these are the non-commercials. So commercials are um, companies which say, don't know, export, uh, what, 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 what do the uh, Canadians export? Well, I have, I have something in mind, but, um, I just don't. I just don't know the the, the English uh, English word for this. So in Germany we call it Ahornsirup. Uh, one second, I just find it. I find out Ahornsirup. Maple syrup. That was okay. Well, I was thinking about the maple leaves uh, all the time, but it's maple syrup. Okay. Well, didn't know that. Um, that's an easy one. Okay. So they let's say they export maple syrup. So they're commercials exporting maple syrup. Now the thing is, they have to pay their their workers, for example, in Canadian dollar. So if you're now selling the maple syrup um, to Germany, um, the thing is, you're getting paid in in euros, um, and then you have to convert it those euros into Canadian dollars and you have fluctuations here in the Canadian dollar uh, from an exchange rate perspective meaning you have to somehow hatch this position and to make sure that you have no currency exposure here no no speculative position well you say I, I uh, I'm, I'm produce this maple syrup in Canadian dollar and uh, what I have is it's it's I have it here so I'm selling Canadian dollars then um, in this moment, respectively, put it the other way around. Um, um, oh yeah, let's let's put it put it that way around. Um, so usually, you have an anticyclical position here in the Canadian dollar, uh, meaning if you have an uptrend, usually you see the green line being above zero, meaning that the uh, non-commercials, big speculators. Um, hedge funds, CTAs, and everything being long Canadian dollar, going pro-cyclical long, while the opposite trade is uh, held by the commercials, 
or hold by the commercials. And um, so, what? Make long things short. The, the great thing about this is the following: um, what you see here is uh, right now. By the way, let's one second use this one. So, what you see here is the following. This is on record. The green line is on record the most short ever. Okay. So there was once there was there was a time here in 2007 um, when the Canadian dollar what uh, the market participants were that much uh, or that were so aggressively um, um, that short Canadian dollar that was here shortly before we shot up um, to well I don't know where did we go from here so it was a 84. So it's Canadian dollar, U.S. dollar. So you have to convert it here. It's Canadian dollar, U.S. dollar. You pushed. We pushed up to 110. So it's, it's a really significant move here. We're talking about uh, um, a move of of 30 percent based on this sentiment extreme. So markets were heavily net short Canadian dollars here, and markets shot up aggressively. So similar positioning was here. That was uh, in 2013. The unfortunate thing is that that you do not just do not see here. Or let's let's have a look here, for example. So usually, the market is really stretched. That's what I want to talk about. What what I want to say. The market is usually very stretched here. In this case, on the downside, if the market is so heavily short, and that's something I right now look at right here, and I, I just wonder, well, is this um, justified or not? So somehow I'd say yes. Canadian economy right now doesn't look that good. So I mean, on the other hand. Um, the Bank of Canada last week said, well, everything's um, um, so far, it, it looks good, and, and the housing bubble, okay, uh, it's, it's uh, building up, and, and uh, there, there are definitely some signs of overheating. Nevertheless, we have measures to somehow get rid of those uh, developments here. Um, nevertheless, I have to say that the Canadian dollar um, and the Canadian economy in general has probably a big problem ahead of them uh, based on this housing bubble forming. And if this housing bubble bursts, uh, it could have some significant negative impacts on the Canadian economy, um, meaning that in the long term, I'm definitely not very bullish the Canadian dollar. That's something I have to say here. Even though, from a short-term perspective, I look at those sentiment extremes and I say, well, there's a high chance that we get to see a, a short covering here rather sooner than later, pushing Canadian dollar higher. If I then take into account the capital inflows back into the euro here, which pushed the Euro-Canadian dollar um, higher, if you just look at that. I mean, we're, we're talking about less than two months, and the market went up from 141 to above 150. 152 here in this case. So we're talking about a move which is nearly 10% in no time. And then you have on the other side the sentiment extreme in the Canadian dollar. Now we see the market topping out here, bearish divergence developing. So all in all, it's getting really interesting to probably look at the Can Euro Canadian dollar here from a short side. I was already short, was stopped up break even yesterday. So in this move here, Oh, no, the day before, I'm sorry. Um, that was already on Tuesday. So the market pushed higher, stopped me out, attacked here those highs again. I have to say I'm happy that I got stopped out since um, there was a good chance that the market just shoots through this uh, um, um, level here around 52.20 uh, and taking out my stop. So my stop light here uh, at, this, at this point. Um, but all in all, I'm still waiting and I'm still having Euro Canadian dollar on my watch list and I, I definitely prefer to go short Euro Canadian dollar again to bet on a bigger move down here but I don't want to be short right now so I, I want still I want to wait since um, as already said we have we have uh, uh, Pentecost here around the corner thinning out liquidity in the markets um, so probably it weakened in Germany especially so in Europe uh, Euro currency pairs there's definitely not much action to be expected. Then we have to take into account that uh, we have the ECB on tap next week on Thursday, uh, where probably um, the market will will come down even more than before that. So Euro cat or in general, going short Euro right now is probably a little too early. Nevertheless, I, I definitely have it on my agenda. I definitely have it on my watch list, and I could imagine Euro cat to to uh, yeah go significantly lower from here. Um, probably as low as 146, 145. So the risk reward with a stop um, um, above uh, 152, 
50 from the 52 20 with 52 50 um, is, is really attractive so definitely something worth watching and um, yeah so that's it on, on euro cat in euro Australian dollar I was a little more optimistic in the morning that had something to do with the fact that um, the Aussie was weak but it wasn't as weak as it is right now so Aussie is heavily sold right now so um, my willingness to go euro Australian dollar long I'm sorry, Euro Australian dollar short here uh, definitely uh, came down massively over the last trading hours here. So that's definitely something. I have it on my agenda too. Um, I, I've seen the, the switch back from uh, being aggressively um, Aussie long to neutral here over the last weeks. And, and so from a sentiment perspective, Australian dollar is also very interesting. Nevertheless, um, with now some 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 strange things let's call them uh some strange things that going on here in china with with this huge huge drop in dollar juan respectively the spike here in, in the juan somehow something seems to be wrong in in, in china and uh with um china the, 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 the there's a there's a deep connection between china and and uh, australia so if something's going wrong here in china you can expect it uh to some someday to to have negative impacts on Australia as well so that's one of the reasons why I'm currently stepping back a little from the Australian dollar dollar after the last days and the, the developments taking place here so my main currency pair I'm watching right now is euro cat and then in second place it says euro Australian dollar and uh, yeah so that's definitely something I'll uh, I'll keep on watching here it's far more interesting than the equity markets even though we have the US uh, market opening here um, and, and as a topic of this webinar, but I'm, I'm really sorry, just just look at what's going on here. So it's not getting more attractive. Just imagine you're positioned here. Um, I mean, at the end, even though if we are positioned, that doesn't necessarily mean that the market gives us any kind of action. So um, yeah, nevertheless, I just want to, to show you uh, the strategy I'm, I'm using here. So in fact, it's a really simple strategy. So it's, um, it's a combination of, of two uh, things. So first of all, it's the setup itself on the open range. So you identify the advantage and you do this based on Dow theory, for example, or you do this thanks to a five-minute um, um, uh, 200 SMA or EMA, take whatever indicator you like, uh, you want to lose, uh, use. Um, and uh, then you just define the open range between 1.30 and 2.15 p.m. GMT. The great thing about this is um, you, can, you can use a so-called breakout indicator. Um, if, if you're interested in it, I, I just can uh, send it over to you via, via email here. Um, and this is something which is drawn automatically. So if you click here in, this, in, this, uh, uh, in the chart, you have the breakout um, uh, um, values. And here you have the period begins at, in this case, this is, these are, these are uh, GMT plus one um, um, hours, trading hours here. But um, it depends on, on uh, which, which, uh, um, which time you're using here in your, in your computer. But um, you, can, you can easily adapt this. Um, you have the period which begins here, period begin, ends there. Then you say, okay, the box ends here. That's it. You click OK, and then you get automatically drawn those uh, lines into your chart and the next thing what you do is by the way I, I don't have it here but um, in this case I'm not using the SMA but let's use the uh, let's use the EMA so it's exponential 200 red line not sure if you use the red line let's go for the I don't know what about this one so and um, yeah, very easy thing. So now you, you go long in the moment we trade above this moving average and you go short the moment we trade below this moving average. That's the setup. So nothing, nothing more to add here. Um, all you, you, you say is now, well, we're trading above this, slightly above, but still above this. So meaning all in all, let's go long here if the market breaks out on the upside. Uh, put the stuff below uh, the, the, the open range, which was defined here with this indicator and, and, and is drawn into the chart with this small black line. And um, so that's it. So that's the setup. That's how you define the open range. But now the discretionary approach comes into play here. So the discretionary approach is the following. Uh, the discretionary touch, I've called it. So the thing is, um, how do you find the advantage for the trading day? So you could easily say, well, great um, we are trading above the 200 in this case EMA and uh, go just go long but now just imagine what happens in the moment where one second 
what happens the moment you see you see a huge expansion on the on the downside? Um, one sec. I, I just I just this is the problem with with low volatility here. Uh, I need a better example, like like this this one for example. But the problem is that you, you didn't get to see uh, um, a huge breakout. But I, I just want to give you the the idea behind this. So you need to to run a backtest here yourself if you if you really want to to trade with this strategy. So what what you see is that the market is opening here. Obviously, is building the trading range, the open range here, and we are already somehow. Well, this is all has to be put in in relation to 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 other. Uh, tendencies here of the market, but we are trading somehow aggressively above the 200 uh, um, um, EMA, for example. We we already trade quite significantly above this. Um, I don't have any any better example. Sorry, I just I just don't have it. Just just look it up. Uh, just just look at, at how you how you could define this. Um, what, what I'm talking about here, I want to talk about is, is the following. If you're trading that much um, or that far away from the from the EMA here, well, you could probably say the market is very extended on the upside. There's another way of of, of saying this. Um, so if you're trading the five minute time frame. Um, we know that the one hour chart is our direct dominator. So there's no big surprise that I'm having the one hour chart here since it gives me a clear overview of where do we stand right now. And um, now if you, if you look here at uh, the discretionary touch, you see that this is somehow implemented in the strategy. So how do you find the advantage? You could easily say, well, we're trading above the 200 EMA and then, well, I just go long and we trade below it, well, I just go short. But it depends on how much and how far away you trade from the EMA, I think. So um, the thing, what you what you could do is you look at the dominating time frame of your traded time frame, which means in this case, as already said here, it's a five minute time frame I'm trading. So I look at the one hour trying, uh, time frame. And uh, then we look at where we trade. So do we trade in the so-called accumulation or in the distribution area? So what's meant by this? The accumulation area, this is the uh, area here where big speculators usually start to uh, build their positions. What do I mean by that? Well, just imagine the following. You're, you're a big trader and um, you're, I don't know, you're trading for a company which is uh, not trading well, not necessarily um, um, based on uh, um, 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 speculative gains you're looking for, kind of prop trading firm or something, but you're just an execution-only guy sitting at a big company, and then there is, uh, I don't know, you're, you're managing, you're just a trader, you're probably managing um, uh, the portfolio here for some investors who want to have 3% a year or something, insurance company, LENs, or whatever. And then um, you know, okay, I have to buy. Uh, I have to buy DAX now. I, I just want to have um, a bigger exposure in terms of um, equities in my portfolio here, since uh, from a yield perspective, it makes sense to have such a position. Whatever reason there might be to have such a position. So now the thing is, where do you buy? That's the question you usually ask, right? So just imagine you're not a small guy here. You're not saying, oh, I'm buying two decks and then it, that's it. But you're saying, hey, I have to buy, I don't know, two million decks, probably a little too much. But let's say uh, something in the uh, six-figure area. You have to buy such a huge amount. Do you really think that you would take, uh, um, or you would you would buy a break to new highs, or would you say, well, probably I'm not getting the best price for my clients here. Probably it makes sense to somewhere buy in the region here um, of this green box somewhere here um, below the former highs, which if we break above them, um, shows that this sequence of higher highs and higher lows is, uh, yeah, is 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 is, is um, 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 bringing the trend even higher. So um, what would you do here? So I bet you definitely look for this area. That came up. By the way, it's Ursachbereich in German. So this is a German um, I'm in chart here or picture. So it's the accumulation area. So you buy in this green box. You just try to buy it here, accumulate it somehow. Um, buy something here, buy something here, buy something here. At the end, you just hope that you have enough material um, which then 
um, you have before the market pushes to new highs. The moment the market pushes to new highs, well, you get trouble, especially if we now go to this point here where we push to new highs, since this is some um, level which many market participants have on their agenda already. So this is a potential stop level. This is a potential stop level for those who went short and bad on a bigger corrective, a bigger corrective move, so regression trader if you want. Or regression traders, but it's also the region where um, you find buy stops from some market participants saying, hey, if the market breaks to new highs, I'm buying. Um, and all those, all those um, um, market participants are interested in buying, especially here and at latest, the moment shortly before we break to new highs. So that's definitely don't, not the, the market environment you want to buy in, especially not if you're forced to buy for your clients and get a very attractive price. So what you need to try to do is you, you want to buy here aggressively and in anticipation of a break higher. Meaning on the other hand, there's a high chance that the moment when the market breaks to new highs, uh, you see kind of a of, of fake out here on the upside and the market then comes down. So the higher the market moves from here, the more unattractive it gets to buy the DAX in this case, for example, um, or the S&P or EURUSD or whatever market you, you, you might like here. Um, the, the, the higher the market rises, the more unattractive the risk reward or the trade from a risk reward perspective gets. So this is, this is the thing here in this case. This is the thing here in this case. Um, yeah, whatever. Um, so what you what you want to avoid is you don't want to buy here in the area of this of this red box. What what you want to have is you want to buy here in in this region of this green box. And um, the main reason, by the way, is to have a more attractive uh, risk reward here. And um, yeah, so that's exactly. That's exactly um, 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 why I say, well, or why not use this knowledge, let's put it that way, why not use this knowledge here and uh, formulate a so-called discretionary touch. So the setup itself here is really simple and um, the setup itself probably works, all, uh, works already fine um, if you just work here with the, with the five minute EMA or SMA approach or something, but probably makes even more sense to not just bring in this, but also look at where do we trade here? Do you trade in the so-called accumulation or in the so-called distribution area? Do we trade in an area here in our dominating time frame, which is makes it more likely that uh, in this case here demand diminishes, supply on the in, 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 in case of a downtrade diminishes here on the downside? Um, is it is it more likely here that the market then well probably will turn around? Uh, and these are by the way the moments when the market is is trading quite significantly above um, here in this case the, the, the um, um, EMA in this case so the exponential moving average so we have already we've already seen an, exp um, um, an ex um, extension here on the upside probably this is not the best chart but I just I just thought about a chart here have a look at the DEX it's by the way a simple same scenario by the way uh, it's the same scenario now let's have a look have a look here so what I'm talking about is, is the following. That was, I don't know, for whatever reason, where do we come from? Is there? Yes, this is perfect. I mean, this is great. So just look at this. So the market is already here pushing higher over two days um, after showing some, some, some yeah, let's call it weakness. Or here, um, the, the, the move higher, this is even more uh, um, great, this, 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 this chart. So uh, remember what happened here, what was this? That was, that was the move shortly before the uh, presidential election in, in, uh, in France. And then look what happened here. So if you look at this, that there was a weekend in between. The market opened here, it was hugely extended on the upside. So we, we pushed to, to nearly new all-time highs in this case. So if you want to see this in the hourly chart, well, what are we talking about is here is this move. So this is this move on the 5th of, of May. And then we have a huge extension on the upside. So the market is, is pushing aggressively higher here, pushing to new all-time highs on a Friday evening. And you see this is extension here on the upside, um, not just from a market technique or Dow theory perspective, but you can also see it here in case of the uh, of the of the um, 205 minute 
exponential moving average. So you can see the huge squeeze here into the weekly close. And then, well, there's just it's getting too unattractive to, to, to buy here in this area, which, which will lead you to the fact to expect the market coming down from those levels. And then if you trade the breakout out of the open range, you can easily say, well, we are significantly above the 200 M M exponential moving average, meaning, well, the advantage is on the long side, no doubt, no question about it. But the thing is that we are so extended on the upside that it makes more sense to probably expect the market to, to, to move lower from there. And uh, this is the so-called discretionary touch here, which I just tried to, to represent to you. So um, you could easily formulate here the open range breakout setup, but I think it's definitely fine to find a discretionary uh, component here, um, which will lead you to uh, probably, um, which will which will lead you to 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 an adaption in terms of of uh, um, well yeah, from a risk reward perspective let's call it so it's an adaption from a risk reward perspective um, where you say if the risk reward is getting so unattractive um, here on the upside or on the downside based on the extension we've seen and probably it makes more sense to trade anticyclical here or just leave it. That's another option. So you don't need to be in the markets all the time, but we could easily say, well, I wait for the market to just um, uh, come down a little and, 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 and um, yeah, yeah, come down, ca calm down a little, come down a little, uh, or, or push up a little after this huge and extensive um, move here on, on this or that side. Yeah, and so, in fact, that's it. Um, nothing more to add here. So um, I, just, you, I, I just hope that you um, could get something out of, of, of my presentation here. So uh, right now, as you can see, the market is pushing higher. So the, the setup, it's an imaginary setup here in this case. It's uh, getting triggered right now. So now you could easily um, move probably the stop here to this level. Say, um, let's try to get out some, some risk of this trade probably get a better risk reward but um, make a, sen a sensible better risk reward put the stop here so at the moment we drop below this level in a five minute time frame you just don't want to be long on the intraday um, 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 basis anymore and um, yeah so the target on the upside around 21,000 21,100 points is still um, in play let's see if it if it works out I'll just present it to you in uh, tomorrow's morning meeting here um, and uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see if it, it works out into the into the evening. Um, I just um, wish you a nice evening and uh, relax a little. Talk to you again then tomorrow at the 9:30 a.m. GMT in uh, tomorrow's morning meeting. Um, as already said, I, I just hope that you could get something out of my uh, presentation here. If you have any questions, shoot them over. If you want this breakout indicator, just uh, ask for it. I can easily um, send it over, no problem. And um, yeah, so that's it from my end. I wish you. Uh, a nice evening, as already said, and uh, talk to you again tomorrow. I look forward to it. Have a nice day. See you, and bye-bye.